Welcome back, Zero K fans, to another exhibition match. So we're going to be on Small Divide, watching Anarchid versus the Sponge. And this map, you might want to get used to this map. It's a very commonly played map. Pretty small, kind of like the last one, kind of like Terra. It's very flat. It's got a much more pronounced terrain barrier, however, as the name suggests. There is a small divide there. However, this terrain is still pathable by bots completely. Vehicles obviously can't do anything about it, but bots have no problem with it. They get a bit slowed down, but they aren't particularly hampered. So, see that Anarchid and Sponge both starting out with... Oh, see, Sponge starting out with Cloakabot Factory, Anarchid is starting out also with the Cloakabot Factory. Which, for this map, is pretty much the go-to factory. You could do shields, I've seen it done, it works well, but Cloakybots... On a map like this, fairly open, but not too flat. Cloaky bots do especially well, so the sponge quickly going north with his, figuring out where Anarchid is. I should point out, actually something I haven't pointed out about Zero K up to this point, which I really should. Zero K doesn't have exactly set start locations. Instead, you have start boxes. In the case of this map here, the start box is basically the entire north side for one player and the entire south side for another player. You pick one spot, your commander stop, spawns there, and you start from there. Both players going for corner starts as a result, but it's really just a matter of just knowing which space is more advantageous to you, the way you like to play, and... I mean, honestly, I'm a bit surprised neither player went for the three Metal Extractor start point, rather going for the one that had five Metal Extractors that are a bit harder to defend, so this start point would be a bit easier to defend early on, whereas this one allows for... Oh wait, never mind, there's three Metal Extractors here, it doesn't look like... No, it's the case in both, never mind. I apologize, that was... Mistake of mine, I didn't quite see that they were taken already. So yes, both players actually taken a good start location. Though Anarchid's start location may be slightly more advantageous. Regardless, harassment coming in from the sponge. Lightly destroyed, not quite built up yet, and no other units built up. Anarchid going straight for builders and some defenses. So I guess I had Anarchid pegged all wrong. He is much more defense oriented than either of his previous opponents. Either the sponge or... Actually, I can't remember who it was last time. Bizarre, I can't remember. But regardless, sponge... Going for nice harassment there, and at the same time, Anarchid, well, it does have some small harassment, but the Sponge is really focused on unit production right now. Anarchid is barely focused on unit production, just now getting some glaives. Right now, which is about two minutes into the game, he is getting glaives and was focused very heavily on his Rector. However, this Rector is doing a decent job of Reclaim, which is always good. Reclaiming is the easiest way to get income early on, while the Sponge... Much more focused on getting more Metal Extractor set up and making sure that Anarchy keeps his down. As a general rule in 0k, offense is just the best strategy overall. You want to make sure that your opponent's economy stays weak. Doesn't matter as much if your, if your economy gets strong, as long as your opponent's economy is weaker. And at this point, Anarchy is sending out a lot of Glaives rather separately, more for scouting than for direct raiding, while the Sponge focuses heavily on direct raiding, but Anarchy using a Flamethrower Commander, and these Glaives cannot survive that Trying to get in, but already losing well, losing all them, taking a lot of damage before they even get close to the laser turret, and the laser turret's finishing them off, so nothing really gained from that raid. In fact, quite a bit lost. All those glaives are now metal income for the spot for Anarchid, and Anarchid actually sending in a tick as well. This is earlier than you'd normally expect, but ticks can come on any time. They're a nice little EMP suicide bomber unit, and they are scary. Because they're very hard to see. They're very small, they're easy, they dig into the ground and thus are cloaked. And you can just go over them, and right now, given that this is the best spot to go through, this tick is going to be nice in that divide, and when any units come over it, it can just blow up in their faces, stunning them and leaving them open for these glaives. Speaking of which, glaives are coming in, and they are soon to be stunned by the tick. However, the tick has been apparently spotted. The sponge able to see it coming, only having one glaive stunned and keeping the rest of them in good position. However, they are blocking each other's shots. They aren't letting each other get through, and Anarchid able to micromanage his... Glaives much better. One thing to bear in mind about 0k is that units actually have to have line of sight to hit. So if you have a large group of units like what the Sponge had, they will block each other. They can't shoot through each other. In fact, sometimes embarrassingly you can have units shoot at each other and end up hitting each other. As I was mentioning last game with the Ducks, last time I used Ducks, I ended up having one of them accidentally shoot, each other, shoot the other one in the face and kill it. That was very embarrassing. Powerful, but embarrassing. Anyway, the Sponge able to get some reclaim from those Glaives sent in, but at this point it really just evens the playing field. Right now he does have a nice little boost of income, and he isn't using that especially well, in fact. He's he's continuing to reclaim, and he is losing a lot of metal. Anakin, on the other hand, not losing any metal, though he is starting to get quite a bit more income than 
Should he is actually low in energy? That's the problem. He cannot use up the metal he has. Not having enough energy to build with. He needs to build more power plants. He is working on that right now. But he needs quite a few more. He needs about three or four more solar plants right now. And he is getting bit in the back foot when it comes to military. The sponge doing a pretty good job actually setting up his military and Anarchid, his early defensive economy strategy not paying off, which given the way Zero K is designed isn't entirely surprising. So the sponge not quite ahead in terms of Actually, Anarchy does have this top left corner here, so the sponge is not quite ahead in terms of his permanent economy, but he is... Well, he's actually bleeding metal. He's not even using the metal that he has. He really should be building power plants with that. Which he is now, but he really should have been before. And a tick coming in here, only able to stun a couple glaives. The rest of the glaives are being torn apart. However, the big, big player here is going to be this warrior, assuming he gets in range, that is, this... These rockers are getting in the way. But the warrior, if it gets into range, will be able to tear apart these glaives. The warrior is the riot unit. It has a couple nice little rapid-fire machine guns on both of its arms. And those rip apart rare units like No Tomorrow. They actually, if you have three of them together, they can rip apart a commander like No Tomorrow. At least level 1 to level 2 commander. They do well against those. But, on the other hand, we don't see... We don't see a whole lot of them. We do see a Zeus coming up, which is... I think might be a little early for that, actually. Zeus's are quite powerful. I mean, they're EMP, EMP assault units, fire lightning shots that stun enemies. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't see using them until you start to get a few riots coming out from your opponent against a bunch of glaives like this. I think it might just end up being taken out by the tick and then torn to shreds by the glaives. Really, at this point, warriors and glaives are gonna be the best bet. There's not much else that can be done. However, one of the glaives trying to shoot this tick out in the ground, not able to do it since it was not there only managing to do a little bit of impromptu landscaping instead. And the Tick able to stun two of the Glaives. However, the Warrior is still going to be the trump card. Anarchid can't do too much against that. He is starting to get enough of an advantage in Glaives that it might not matter. But it's going to be close even now. Really, it's a question of whether or not this... This Warrior can get into range. And the Glaives able to get rid of one of the Metal Extractors. Anarchid now even with the Sponge and Economy. And the Sponge actually able to deal quite a bit of damage to those... Glaze, getting rid of them without any effort. And, yeah, these... Even that many glaze is not enough, and... The Zeus doing a decent job accidentally stunning its own Rocco, but... Still able to take care of what was there, and a warrior coming out as well for Anarchid. This is where the Zeus can shine. Actually, getting rid of the warrior quite effortlessly, as it had already been damaged at that point, but... This point now we see their... Sponge is... I think he's going to be able to win this game. I think Anarchid is losing everything. He does have his commander over to the south trying to take some more melee structures, which is a good idea. But the Sponge, on the other hand, has his commander nice and safe in his base. Actually, <laughs> with my favorite set of... Well, not quite my favorite set of upgrades. The Lazarus Device and Energy Cell are the big ones. Lazarus Device allows you to resurrect dead units. Doesn't matter who's dead units, just resurrect dead units. You have to pay the energy cost of them, but it's still pretty... M and metal cost if you have to repair them. But it's very effective, especially if you're playing against another factory. But this Zeus stunning itself with... Yeah, it was actually stunning itself with Sony EMP for a little while. Or, no, that wasn't. That was a tick from the looks of it. However, able to get rid of that Kulgibot factory, and Anarchid at this point has no other factories in place from the looks of it. No, he does not. He does have his commander over to the south, and he does have... His economy still actually stronger than the sponges. I'm not sure if that's due to reclaim or not. It is... Not due to reclaim. Or, no, it's not due to reclaim. It's entirely due to his metal extractor. He has, still has more metal extractor, stronger economy, getting a shield bot factory, and it's really a matter of time before the sponge finds him, but that's what Anarchy is going for. He's trying to buy time to make sure that he has enough time to build the units he needs to counter what the sponge has. That being said, the sponge having a strong economy, strong military, and no real pressure right now means he can just easily walk around the map, tearing apart all these metal extractors and removing Anarchid's economy before the shield by factor is even done. At this point, Anarchid is not out of metal. He's still good for metal production, and he's still not running out, but he's actually building two shield bot factories, not just the one. One of them being caretaker assisted. Even then, the Sponge has a large enough military, he can easily take care of it. A bunch of Rockos going over to take care of the Southeast Shieldbot Factory, while the main force of Glaives going towards the Northwest. However, the late laser turrets are able to stop them pretty well, actually able to destroy half of them. The Zoo's coming in, taking up the rear, and that should be able to tear apart everything. But the first Shieldbot Factory done, the second Shieldbot Factory also done, both of them building up bandits, and these bandits will probably go down, not even able to build up, getting attacked too heavily while they're in production. 
And the zoo is able to tear apart everything that's left. So there's really not much Anarchy can do at this point. He has lost his economy now. He is down to 12 metal income. He has pretty much just... Well, that metal extractor. And that's about it. I'm not sure where he's getting all his metal income, in fact. But he is... He is done. The sponge will be able to finish him off pretty soon. This commander being quite an advantage, but... With the Rockos, he... Actually, the Rockos are going down to the Bandits. Bandits, being a Raider unit, able to take care of Skirmishers without too much issue. The Rock, Paper, Scissors relationship tends to be Raiders beat Skirmishers, beat Riots and Assaults, which beat... Well, okay, Raiders also kind of beat Assaults. And Riots beat Raiders. But at this point, we see that the Sponge is fully set up for everything, and I believe that was a Roach. And Roaches, in case you're wondering, are... A suicide unit from the Shieldblad Factory, but Anarchy resigning after losing his commander. Anyway, Roach is a suicide unit, kind of like the Tick, except they just deal damage. Deal tons of damage in a wide area. Very effective for taking care of single targets, like other commanders. But at this point, Anarchy losing the game, and that is the game. Rather interesting. Well done, the Sponge. And let's see what time it is now. I think that's going to be it for tonight, everyone. So thank you for watching, and have a good night.